Welcome to Random Movie Reviews, I'm Nathan, and today I'll be talking about 10 underrated horror movies. Well, we are nearing the end of Spooktober, which is sad, I know, but we still got a few days left, and if there's anybody out there that's looking for horror movies to watch that they haven't seen before, or maybe a horror movie that's like, oh yeah, I remember that. I haven't seen that in a long time. Wonder if that still holds up. That's precisely what this list is for. These are 10 horror movies that I've watched uh, both this year and last year. There's some from last year that I'm incorporating into this list of uh, horror movies that I think are a little underrated. Now, every time I do one of these lists, there's always some person in the comments going, that movie isn't underrated. Everybody knows that movie. What are you, an idiot? Uh, well, first of all, this is just my opinion, okay? If you disagree with me, that's fine. Feel free to mention what underrated horror movies you recommend in the comments. Uh, all I ask is that you don't be a dick about it. Just just don't be a dick. Because if you are, I'm going to delete the comment. So there's, there's really no point. And when I say underrated, uh, I, I mean it in two different ways. So there's the first way in that these some of these movies are underrated in that they aren't talked about enough or that they're kind of underseen or underappreciated. There's that sense. And then the other sense is these movies came out and got pretty negative reviews from both fans and critics, and I feel like deserve a, a second chance. And so I think all of the movies on this list can fall into either one of those two categories, or in some cases, both. Um, so that that's kind of the criteria I'm using when I talk about an underrated horror movie. Uh, and also, none of these movies are ranked. There's not one movie that I think is more underrated than the other. I mean, these movies, all of them are underrated for their own reasons. And so this isn't a ranking video. These are just 10 underrated horror movies that I'm recommending to all the Spooktober fans out there. So with all that being said, let's get into it. At number 10, we have the remake of The Blob. Now, this is one of those horror movies where I've mentioned it being underrated before. I actually have a video. Uh, a solo review on this movie that I'll put in the uh, description below for anyone who's interested in seeing that. This is one of those movies I mentioned being underrated and there's always a couple of people that's like, what? That movie isn't underrated? That movie's great. Everybody knows that movie. Well, no, not everybody knows that movie. I know several uh, horror movie fans that have still yet to see this, even though I've given it a glowing recommendation. I'm like, you gotta watch this movie. It's great. Uh, it's one of the best 80s horror movie remakes ever. Uh, it's right up there with The Thing and The Fly, in my personal opinion. And it's one of the best remakes ever, because the original The Blob is boring. And the furthest thing from scary, and it's just not entertaining to watch. Uh, the 80s remake takes the core concept of The Blob and does what the original version couldn't do, which is actually make it scary, and make it entertaining, and make it gross, and adventurous, and uh, even comedic in some areas. It is a beautiful, uh, over the top, wonderfully entertaining horror movie uh, that gives you a little bit of everything. And the creators of this film previously made Dream Warriors, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, the best Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And uh, it's just a wonderfully entertaining horror movie that I mention every now and again. And there are some people that I know who are horror movie fans like, you know, I still haven't seen that movie. Get up on it if you haven't seen it. At number nine, we have uh, a movie that I reviewed recently and have a video on, which I'll also put in the description, and that is The Stepfather. This is a movie that I watched for the first time um, this year. It was a movie that I heard about for a long time. I'm like, you know what? The Stepfather, I want to watch that. And it was it was great. It was it's it's kind of more of a psychological thriller than it is an outright horror movie. But the last 10 minutes and then the opening couple of minutes are definitely go into straight up horror and we get some slasher elements later on uh, but it is heavily psychological and what makes this movie fantastic is terry o'quinn's performance he is so good in this movie he rides that line of of trying to be a normal person but then being completely insane and then there's also kind of a tongue-in-cheek quality to his performance i feel where he's kind of winking at the audience a little bit but most of the time he is totally sinister in this movie uh and it is it is very entertaining to watch it it is kind of a slow build but the movie is short it's under 90 minutes and you always feel like the movie is building up to something and old boy does it build up to something i'm actually curious about watching the sequel to this movie because that has a little bit of a fan following and i'm curious to watch that because terry o'quinn comes back and i would just love to see him play this character again but yeah the stepfather is uh it's underrated in the sense that it's a movie that a lot of people have heard of but to my surprise, once again, similar to The Blob, that people just haven't 
put in the time to see yet. And I and I feel like it, it definitely deserves uh, a watch from people. This this one is a very good tense thriller with some great moments and an awesome performance by Terry O'Quinn. Okay, at number three, we have one that I think could be considered controversial to a degree, and that is Scream 4. Uh, I did a video uh, ranking all of the Scream movies because I'm a big fan of the Scream franchise. And at number two, my second favorite Scream movie is Scream 4. And my reasoning behind that is out of all the Scream sequels, in my opinion, the fourth one has aged the best in terms of its commentary on uh, the dangers behind internet obsession and online fame via social media. Um, and I don't, I don't want to get into spoilers about that. I, if you haven't seen Scream 4, uh, I definitely recommend it. Uh, the... I love the motivation of the ghost face in this movie because it feels oddly plausible, especially in today's landscape. I don't even think Kevin Williamson, who wrote the script to this, as well as the first two screen movies, I don't think he even realized uh, how kind of ahead of his time he was when writing Scream 4 because that movie came out in the early 2010s. It was in the infancy of the online social media era before it really became to, you know, boom and be in the mainstream. And uh, like I said, the motivation behind the ghost face in that movie just feels kind of eerie because I could see somebody literally murdering somebody else for online fame. It's something that's happened in reality. It's scary and it really adds to the overall tension that is in Scream 4, in my opinion. And on top of that, the movie's just flat out entertaining. It takes all of the strengths from the previous Scream movies that you love to see. You know, our, our three core characters come back with Dewey, Sydney, and Gale. Um, the only flaw I have with the movie is that there is a glare on the, the lighting and kind of the look of the movie has a gloss to it that is kind of unbecoming and uh, just not very flattering to look at. I'm not sure what the deal is behind that. But outside of that, Scream 4 is totally underrated and I will always uh, shout it from the rooftops because there are some Scream fans that think this is the worst Scream movie. How can you say that when Scream 3 exists? That's my question. Scream 3 is fucking terrible but scream 4 is great so that's that that's i had to include it on this list at number seven we have a scream ripoff film this is yet another movie that i did a video on uh it was a joint review i did alongside with i know what you did last summer because these were two scream ripoff movies or movies that are often claimed as being scream ripoffs which i don't really think that they are but regardless that's kind of the reputation that they've garnered um so I watched both of those movies for the first time this year, and the one that I enjoyed more, I enjoyed both of them quite a bit. I know what you did last summer is a lot of fun. It's got that 90s cheese that I find very nostalgic. Uh, and that goes for Urban Legend as well. Urban Legend was the one that I enjoyed more. Uh, it was way more over the top, way more cheesy, uh, more of an outright slasher movie. Uh, I know what you did last summer is more of a more of a, a thriller with some slasher elements in it. But Urban Legend is an outright slasher movie that has a really fun premise in that the killer kills uh, these college students based on urban legends that were known at the time aren't really super well known now. I don't think urban legends are really a thing anymore. But regardless, it's it's a fun idea for a slasher movie. Uh, the kills are surprisingly brutal and inventive, which I didn't expect going into the movie. Uh, the look of the killer is awesome with the with the uh, with the parka coat and the axe. Uh, the the third act twist is fun, and the movie you know the movie is seen as being a really bad scream ripoff slasher movie. I think it's way too fun and way too uh, well shot. Like, I think the direction of this movie is actually good. I like the visual style of the movie. I think it's got some legitimately fun and well executed slasher suspense sequences. I This movie's underrated in the sense that it's got terrible reviews. There's a lot of horror movie fans that also kind of shit on it. Um, I think it deserves a second chance. I, if you like the, if you like Scream, the original Scream movies or the Scream 1 and 2, uh, if you like kind of cheesy, super late 90s horror movies, then you got to check out Urban Legend. It is just so much fun. I really, really enjoyed this movie. So I had to include it on this list. At number six, we had a movie that I uh, just got done watching about a half hour ago. Uh, it is the newest movie, newest horror movie that I'm including on this list. Uh, and that is James Wan's Malignant. Um to preface this, I, I'm not a huge James Wan fan. He's one of those filmmakers where I can acknowledge that he's a really good filmmaker. He's got good uh, uh, visual style and, and a lot of energy in his direction that is good. But I'm not a big fan of Saw or the Insidious movies or the Conjuring films. They're not really my thing. They're fine for what they are. But 
the direction is good. But when Malignant came out, from the people who saw it, there was a lot of uh, interesting comments coming out about how batshit insane the movie was, and that kind of perked up my ears. I was like, hmm, okay, let's see how crazy this movie is. Oh my god. Malignant is going to be, without a doubt, the most divisive film on this list, because it is the ultimate either you're on board with how insane it is, or you're totally turned off by how stupid it is. And there's no middle ground. It's the ultimate hate it or love it movie. I love good campy horror. And to me, that's what Malignant is. It is well-made, totally insane, schlock, nonsensical horror that takes a lot from uh, numerous horror genres. It takes elements from Italian giallos. It takes elements from body horror movies, uh, slasher movies, paranormal movies, and then elements of... Uh, things that you've never seen in any horror movie ever. The third act in this movie, my face was like, <laughs> and I was laughing because it was insane. It's a movie that it's best, first of all, it's best to go in not knowing anything. I originally wanted to do a standalone review of this movie, but I decided to uh, include it in this list and, and be um, non-spoilery with my comments on it because I feel like this movie needs to be seen without knowing anything about it. It's not particularly scary, but it is totally batshit insane and fun to watch. And it's the kind of horror that I feel like I'm missing nowadays. There isn't enough really well-made, but super schlocky, campy, kind of tongue-in-cheek horror movies anymore. There's only really a handful. And so whenever they do come out, uh, I'm always pleased. And so Malignant is one of those movies where uh, I was grinning from ear to ear. I was laughing a lot. It's I, I it's hard to tell what James Wan's intentions were with this movie. Um, does he know that the movie is insane? Is he trying to be tongue in cheek or is he trying to make something actually scary? Regardless of what his intentions were, the final result is a movie that I now look forward to watching uh, every Spooktober. It has now become a tradition ever since I first saw it. Uh, I absolutely love this movie, and so this is one I definitely needed to include on the list. But for those who have seen this movie, I do ask, please don't spoil it in the comments below. I want people to go in blind. But do tell me what your thoughts are on this movie if you have seen it before. At number five, we have... From Beyond. Now, From Beyond is uh, a movie that I consider to be, and I think a lot of fans consider it to be as well, a spiritual successor to Reanimator because, uh, you know, it's the same filmmaker. A lot of the same actors from that movie are also in From Beyond. And uh, it's got, it's, they're both HP Lovecraft inspired movies. Uh, but From Beyond is, is, um, if you can believe it, it's even more gross than Reanimator. Uh, it's, it's more ambitious cause I think they had a bigger budget. Uh, and it is just super weird and very horny. It's a very horny horror movie. So that might turn some people off, but if you're a fan of schlocky eighties movies that have some pretty impressive practical effects, given the budget of this movie and just some really inventive ideas and it has that kind of tongue in cheek, dark comedic humor that reanimator has. Uh, then I highly recommend From Beyond. It's not as good as Reanimator, in my opinion. Reanimator is one of my favorite horror movies ever. I absolutely love Reanimator. Um, but From Beyond is, um, it, it has a lot of the elements that are from Reanimator in terms of style, in terms of tone, that I really, really enjoy. And this movie, it gets even crazier than Reanimator. That much I'll say. The story isn't as focused. Um, it's a little all over the place, but totally entertaining and uh i just think stuart gordon's a really great filmmaker and uh yeah from beyond is a fun goopy slimy time uh so if you haven't seen from beyond you got to check it out it's it's pretty awesome at number four we have a movie that for this year i'm going to be saving uh to watch on halloween night and that is tales from the crypt demon night um i am not super uh well-versed in the Tales from the Crypt show. I've seen a handful of episodes here and there. Um, but I ended up watching the Tales from the Crypt movie because I blindly bought the Shout Factory Blu-ray. Uh, I was like, oh, it's the Tales from the Crypt. They made a movie. It works completely as a standalone movie. You don't need to be familiar with the show because the show is an anthology series anyway. So it's not like any of the episodes are connected. This movie works totally well as a standalone movie. And it is like... Um, it is, it is totally in the tone of an Evil Dead, or Evil Dead 2 in particular. The movie is uh, very comic booky and campy and over the top. Billy Zane is chewing up the scenery. Uh, you get some awesome practical effects. 
Uh, and like I said, tonally, the movie kind of takes from Evil Dead 2. There's some Dawn of the Dead elements in there. And it is just a totally fun, perfect Halloween night movie. It feels like you're watching an EC comic book come to life. It's kind of like Creep Show in that way, uh, except it's not an anthology. It's, it's one complete story, but it's got that same kind of tone. Uh, but everybody knows Creep Show, and Demon Knight's a movie that totally deserves more recognition because it is so much damn fun. It's become one of my favorite horror movies and specifically one of my favorite horror movies to watch during the month of Spooktober. Whenever I pick movies to watch during Spooktober, I look kind of for a specific tone. I want fun horror, not super depressing and dour horror. Like sometimes I'll throw that in there just to mix it up, but I want fun horror. And there is no better example of a fun horror movie on this list than Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. So if you haven't seen this movie, you got to watch it, especially if you're a fan of Evil Dead 2 or Dawn of the Dead or Creep Show. This movie f falls right into line with those films in terms of tone, in terms of style, in terms of gore and violence. Uh, this movie totally kicks ass. I absolutely love Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. Okay, at number three, actually, I think I take what I take back what I said about Scream 4 being the most controversial. This one's going to be the most controversial because people hate this movie. They really hate this movie. Child's Play 2019 remake. Uh, so here's the thing. In, in As far as the Child's Play franchise goes, I only like the first two movies. In fact, I absolutely love Child's Play 2. Child's Play 2... Uh, is becoming one of my favorite slasher movies ever. I think Child's Play 2 is so much damn fun. The rest of the movies fall into bad horror comedy, in my opinion. Uh, especially like the the Bride of Chucky movie and the Seed of Chucky movie. Like, I, I can't stand those films. They're just grating and annoying, and the comedy sucks. I know some of those movies have fans. I'm not one of them. Haven't seen The Cult of Chucky or The Curse of Chucky, uh, those seem to be more positively received, so I should check those ones out. But I remember when the Child's Play 2019 movie came out, I went to go see it in theaters because I literally had nothing else to do at the time. And I went in with low expectations because I thought the Chucky design looks terrible, and I still do. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. In fact, the movie is so different from the first Child's Play that I think the biggest problem with this movie is that it didn't need to be a Chucky movie. It could have just been any generic killer doll movie because... So many of the ideas in this film are so different from the first movie. Like the fact that it revolves around a robot toy, not a toy that has the soul of a serial killer in it. So it's a completely different angle from that regard. Uh, both the kid actor and Aubrey Plaza, who plays his mother, are legitimately great in the movie. They actually have a really lovely relationship and a touching bond. And I think I ended up really liking this movie because I actually started to care a lot about those two characters. And um, the Chucky stuff was surprisingly gruesome and at times very darkly hilarious. And so I was pleasantly surprised by that. And Mark Hamill brings his own spin to Chucky in terms of his uh, vocal performance. Uh, his voice acting, I think, is it's totally different from uh, Brad Dorif. It is, it is a completely different type of performance. And like I said, the biggest thing against this movie is that it's a Chucky movie. It didn't need to be a Chucky movie. It could have been any generic doll. Overall surprisingly entertaining and, and just a fun watch in my opinion so this is just my opinion so don't don't hate me okay at number two we have what i would probably say is my favorite horror movie of the 2010s and that is dr sleep um i'm a huge fan of the shining i still find that movie to be absolutely terrifying and chilling so when i heard that there was going to be a sequel to it i was like oh how are you going to pull that off? I have not read the book, Dr. Sleep, so I can't comment on whether or not this is a good adaptation. But what I can comment on is the fact that this is a sequel that ties in beautifully to the Kubrick version of The Shining. And it it uh, adds even more depth to that movie by uh, expanding on Danny's character now that he's a grown up played by uh, Ewan McGregor. And uh, seeing his um, transition from the first movie to this movie and him uh, dealing with uh, alcoholism, which is kind of a, a main theme in this movie, which is something that the, the first Shining uh, touched upon. And I've only seen the three hour cut of this movie. I've never seen the theatrical version. All I can say is for a movie that's three hours long, 
does not feel like three hours long. Not in my opinion. I feel like this is a long movie that totally justifies its runtime. There's so many uh, great uh, new additions and elements that are added into this movie that stand out from the first movie. But of course, the third act beautifully ties into kind of the classic Stanley Kubrick aesthetic. But I think one of the best things that Mike Flanagan does with the Dr. Sleep is that he doesn't try to copy the directing style of Stanley Kubrick. I think Flanagan is a smart enough filmmaker to know that's a fool's errand to do that. Uh, he brings in his own style, his own sensibilities to Dr. Sleep. And I was just really kind of blown away because I, I didn't think this movie would work at all. And it works amazing. And it makes me even appreciate The Shining, which is a movie I consider to be perfect already. It makes me appreciate that movie even more. So, yeah, Dr. Sleep is a movie that it, it got kind of uh, middling reviews when it came out. Uh, didn't do well at the box office. Um, and it's a movie that I without a doubt feel uh, is going to get a cult following in, in later years to come. Similar to that of Malignant. Malignant is another movie that I think is going to get a cult following. Um, and it, it's a movie that uh, maybe if you kind of wrote it off, it's like, oh no, this, this can't hold up to The Shining. You may be surprised. So I say watch Dr. Sleep. Uh, I can only recommend the three hour cut because I haven't seen the theatrical, but that three hour thing moves. The movie is uh, got some great horror moments. It's surprisingly touching. There's even some like action moments in it that are like, whoa, there's one scene that's brutal to watch. So it's not a movie that pulls his punches, but um, no, I, Dr. Sleep is totally underrated. I think it's brilliant. I think it is a brilliant movie. At number one, Psycho 2. I watched Psycho 2 for the first time last year. Uh, it is a movie that is often named as being an underrated horror movie. I absolutely adore the first Psycho movie. It is uh, my favorite Hitchcock film, or at least tied with Rear Window. Um, so I went into the movie skeptical, but, you know, hopeful. And what I got returned was a surprisingly thoughtful and uh, very natural uh, addition to the first Psycho movie. Uh, the character of Norman Bates in Psycho 2, played amazingly by Anthony Perkins. I, you know what? Anthony Perkins gets even more time to shine in Psycho 2. Um, he, he's able to bring a, a sympathetic quality to Norman Bates that we don't really get to see that much in the first Psycho. And that's, that's what makes this movie amazing to me, is that Anthony Perkins, he falls right back into the Norman Bates character seamlessly. You deeply care about him. And the thing about this movie is that it's not so much a horror movie as it is like an outright tragedy. This is a very sad movie. So you definitely keep that in mind. You got to be in a mood to watch this movie because I was left watching. I was like, wow, that was really good. Surprisingly powerful. Fucking sad, but really, really enjoyed it. Was surprised at how well it flows um, from the first movie to the second one. It feels like a story that's actually necessary. This doesn't feel like a bullshit cash grab sequel. Uh, you got Meg Tilly in this movie, Jennifer Tilly's sister, uh, playing a character who's kind of befriending uh, Norman, and their relationship was surprisingly touching and beautiful. Uh, this is an 80s movie, so there are some surprisingly like, whoa, some shocking horror moments because the first Psycho was made in 1960 and they don't have moments that are that... Uh, much more psychological with the horror in the first Psycho, but in the second one, it's more kind of classic 80s slasher stuff. Uh, and one of my nitpicks is that the movie does kind of retcon some story elements from the first movie that I was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that. But overall, wow, Psycho 2 really surprised me. Um, I, 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 I don't go as far as like what Quentin Tarantino says. He's like, dude, it's way better than the first one. I don't know about that. I love the first Psycho a lot, but Psycho 2 is a movie that's like, it, it gets up there in terms of like, nearly matching the same quality as the first Psycho, in my opinion. Um, and I'm, I'm being vague by all these movies because I want to be as non-spoilery as possible. So uh, I'm not going to reveal any of the twists in, in Psycho 2. Just go into it um, with an open mind and uh, don't don't look up anything about it if you're a fan of the first Psycho. Or you know what? If you haven't seen Psycho, because I there there's a lot of people who still haven't seen the first Psycho, watch this and watch Psycho 2. It would make a perfect double billing. So... Yeah, Psycho 2 is probably the most underrated horror movie on this list, which is why I saved it for last. Anyway, guys, that's that's my top 10 underrated horror movie list. Um, please mention in the comments uh, what you think about these movies or if you're interested in seeing any of these movies and you haven't seen them already. Uh, I would love to hear what are some horror movies that you guys find to be underrated. Mention in the comments below. 
Uh, and as always, thank you guys for watching.